Hello there! In the first session of the flipped phonology course, I introduced you to phonology. We saw the difference between phonetics and phonology. We also talked about what phonology tells you. In this session today, I would like to introduce you to, to two main objectives. First, I would like you to understand and grasp the main co crucial concepts in phonology, like phoneme, allophone, complementary distribution, free variation, and minimal pairs. The second objective in this session is to teach you how to study the sound patterns of a language. Okay, let's take this example of a French speaker who wants to learn or speak Moroccan Arabic. Actually, for that French speaker, it will, be, it will be very difficult for him to articulate certain sounds in Moroccan Arabic. Why? Because the sound system of Moroccan Arabic consists of ample of sounds that do not exist in Moroccan or in the French sound system. For example, we can mention the sound Q, the sound H, and the sound A. These three sounds do not exist in the French sound system. So for the speaker of French, the repertoire or the potential of producing this sound will be very hard, if impossible. A phonologist who wants to study the sound system of any language needs to know what are the sounds that exist in that language and what are the sounds that do not exist in that language. For that French speaker, it will be very hard for him to articulate those sounds in Moroccan Arabic. A phonologist what he does exactly, or what she does exactly, is studying the sounds and trying to recognize the sounds that are really sounds of that language and the sounds that are just different articulations of those sounds. So let's imagine that a phonologist is going to study the language of a certain culture. For that phonologist, he needs to understand or come up with all sounds that are articulated in that language and he needs also to understand and to know what are the sounds that are just different articulations of that language what is of interest to phonologists here in that language is to understand and to know what are the sounds that contrast meaning there are certain sounds that you can articulate in any language that can contrast meaning if you change one sound, you change the meaning. And there are certain sounds that are not contrastive, they do not contrast meaning. If you change it and you replace it with another sound, it doesn't. It can be just another variation of or another articulation of the same sound. A phoneme in a language is any sound that can contrast meaning. Any sound that is different from other sounds in that language. A phoneme can contrast meaning if you take it and you replace it with another sound, you will have different meaning. So how do phonologists try to find in a language those phonemes, those contrastive sounds and those con distinctive sounds? What they do exactly is finding what they call minimal pairs. And what is a minimal pair? A minimal pair is two or refers to two identical words that are similar in the environment except in one sound segment. If you take the example of pad and bad, there are two similar sounds or two similar words except in one sound segment. Let's take this example. The cat is on the mat. If we take the word cat and we change one sound segment in it, it goes like this. The bat is on the mat. The hat is on the mat. The mat is on the mat. We change one sound segment and we change the whole message, the whole meaning. A phoneme is very crucial in phonology. A phoneme is a mental reality. It's a sound, it's a mental sound image. A phoneme also is a phonetic reality. It's the sound that we produce. It's a sound that can change meaning. So it's a sound which can be communicational. The phoneme is a communicational reality because it changes meaning if we change that phoneme. The second crucial concept in phonology is what is referred to as an allophone, or what we call allophones. So what is an allophone? Allophones in phonology 
are those sounds that are just different articulations of the same sound. Let's take the example of the sound T in English. In English, the T sound can be articulated in many different ways. For example, T can be aspirated like in the word tall. What we articulate exactly is not the T, but an aspirated T. Let's take the example again of stick. The T in the word stick is not aspirated. But what we have in our mind is the normal T. Let's take again the example of writer. Americans, they pronounce it writer, writer, or the example internet, internet. What they do exactly is they've changed T to flopping R. So what they pronounce is not T, what they have in their minds, but what they say exactly is R. So T can be realized in three different ways according to different pronunciations. It can be aspirated T, unaspirated T, or the flapped T. So if the phoneme is distinctive, it can contrast meaning. An allophone does not contrast meaning. An allophone is just a way of articulation of the same sound. A phoneme is the mental sound image that we have or we think that we are producing. But an allophone is diff the different articulations that can happen to a certain sound. We can take the example again of Marakshi accents. In Marrakesh, people, when they want to pronounce the word or the, the, the sound U, they pronounce it U. Do they change meaning? No. So what they have in mind is U, but when we, what exactly they pronounce is U. So instead of saying the name Zhor, they say Zher. It's the same meaning. Instead of pronouncing the word Dud, they pronounce it Dud and many other examples. A phoneme is the mental sound image that we have in our mind, and an allophone is, or refers to the different articulation of the same sound. They do not change meaning, but a phoneme does change meaning. Now we move to this third crucial concept in phonology, which is complementary distribution. What is complementary distribution? Complementary distribution refers to the environment in which a sound or set of sounds occur. When we talk about allophones as different articulations of the same sound and do not change meaning, that means that these allophones do not exist in the same environment. They are different articulations of the same phoneme, but they occur in different environments. We say they are in complementary distribution. When two sounds or three sounds are not three different sound phonemes or they are just three different articulations of the same sound allophones, they must occur in different environments. We say they are in complementary distribution. If we get back to the example of the T sound, T can be articulated as an aspirated T in the word tall or an aspirated T in the word stick or the flapped R in the word writer. We can understand that this T or aspirated T or R occur in different environments. And here we say that they are in complementary distribution. The aspirated T is always found in the initial sound or in the initial position of a word. The unaspirated T is always found after the sound S and the flapped R is always found between two vowels. The first is stressed and the second is unstressed. So we say that these three sounds are in complementary distribution, which means that they are three sounds that occur in different environments. Again, we say that they are allophones of the same phoneme T. They do not change meaning, but they are just different articulations of the same sound. The last crucial concept in phonology is free variation. What is free variation? Let me give you two examples. The sound P 
in English can be articulated differently if we take the example of Scottish accent versus the American accent. The sound P when it occurs at the end of the word leap is articulated differently in Scottish. Scottish D will say I wanna leap, I wanna leap. But Americans D will say I wanna leap. What happens here is that P in American accent is not released, but for Scottish they release it. It's explosive. Another example is so. Americans they do not release the sound P in so, but Scottish they will say soap, soap. Another example in Moroccan Arabic is when you take the three words here قال, قال, أل. These are three different sounds in these three different words a, k, and q. Do they change meaning? No. It's the same meaning, the same environment, except in one sound segment. These are what we refer to as free variants. This is what is phonologically referred to as free variation. Free variation refers to sounds that can permute or change by other sounds without changing the meaning. If we change one sound in one word by another sound and we keep the same meaning, that's what we call free variance. So here, they we're talking here about allophones of the same phonemes. So what is the difference between free variation and minimal pairs? Minimal pairs are two identical words except in one sound segment. If we change it, we change the meaning. But in free variations or free variants, free variants refer to two identical words except in one sound segment, but we don't change meaning. Qal, gal, same meaning. For Scottish leap, leap, and the American leap, they do not change meaning. But for the two words bad, and pad, they are identical except in one sound segment. We change it, we change the meaning. Moroccan Arabic, qas and kas, q and k, two different phonemes. We change it, we change the meaning. So far, we've seen four crucial concepts in phonology phoneme, allophone, complementary distribution, and free variation. These concepts here are very important to understand the second objective of this session which is to teach you how to study the sound patterns of a language. So to study the sound patterns of a language, you need to bear these concepts in mind. I hope you enjoyed this session and please stay tuned for more coming sessions inshallah. And subscribe to stay tuned for more coming videos.